Skywatch Media News for the last week of March 2018. For more than three decades, the frequency of natural disasters have steadily increased, affecting hundreds of millions of people caught off guard by the intensity of the calamities, many of which are weather-related. The fury of the planet is on full display, with no end in sight. Evidence points to the reality of a world that is quickly changing. It is seen and felt every day, even though some remain in denial that the Earth is experiencing changes outside of the usual norm. An example of this can be found in Greenland. Disturbing photographic evidence shows that Greenland is cracking apart, displaying an intertwined series of widening ice fissures. What's happening here is a perfect example of the dramatic changes that have been ongoing in the past three decades and the evidence can be seen in the images from this area. Just 25 years ago, the ice sheet, which covers 650,000 square miles, was mostly stable. But since 2002, it has been losing, on average, close to a billion tons of ice every day, which, if measured in gigatons, would be the equivalent of 215 billion tons of ice that is lost in a calendar year. Even more alarming than the melting of the ice sheets is that researchers who have been on recent expeditions to Greenland's interior have discovered a new pattern behind the mystery of the disappearing lakes. What they discovered is that the lakes are draining much further inland in a cascading chain reaction which is enabled by a vast interconnected web of cracks below the ice, which continue to get wider. What's happening here is basically a domino effect, where one event leads to another. In this particular case, the draining water surges away from the lake and then destabilizes nearby ice beds. The destabilization leads to new cracks, which then begin draining more lakes, and the reaction intensifies on a daily basis. A recent observation uh, saw that 124 of these lakes drained in the span of five days. Even lakes that had formed many kilometers inland were vulnerable to this so-called chain drain reaction when new fissures began appearing in the ice. So these observations warn us that billions of gallons of melted ice are plunging below Greenland's surface on virtually a daily basis. Some of the water is trapped in the ice sheet, but much more of it escapes into the surrounding ocean. What this means is that the Greenland melt is becoming a major concern as future generations are likely to experience sea level rise along coastal cities where high tide flooding could become a continuous headache for heavily populated regions. According to a 2017 report, ice loss in Greenland was responsible for about 25% of global sea level rise in 2014, which was up from just 5% in the year 1993. This then is further proof of how quickly changes are happening on Earth. The melting of Greenland is on full display. The evidence is overwhelming. But if you can't see the forest for the trees, then you end up lost in an endless array of misinformation. There are events happening right now that to the watchful eye would seem surreal, since normality no longer applies in today's world. There is an amazing weather phenomenon that has sparked a great deal of attention recently. In ski resorts across Russia and Romania, the snow has turned a rusty color, while pink snow has been reported in the Ukraine. So what's going on here? According to reports, sand from the Saharan Desert was being carried a considerable distance by powerful winds in the troposphere.
and unexpected weather anomaly such as the dust snow of Sochi is nothing short of baffling. This satellite image shows the dust being carried towards the northeast where a similar phenomenon turns southern Greece into a Martian landscape. On the same day that the sandstorm was turning the skies red in southern Greece, in Greece's northern region a heavy snowfall whitened the skies. Is this becoming the new norm in today's world? A trend is developing with respect to weather patterns which are having a profound effect across the northern hemisphere. A series of harsh nor'easter storms have plagued the northeastern U.S. In all, a total of five consecutive storms developed, of which four were classified as bombogenesis events, a technical term that describes a storm where the atmospheric pressure drops rapidly, allowing the storm to blow up into raging beasts. Once considered a controversial theory, the warming Arctic is making winter weather in the Northern Hemisphere more extreme. For those people living in areas susceptible to these strangely classified storms, it is representing a new normal. These storms are becoming more violent and are lasting longer. The weather in the Arctic is also on the edge of extreme. In late February, temperatures spiked more than 50 degrees above normal. More than a dozen major climate records have been broken in just the past three years. High winter temperatures, low winter and summer sea ice, extensive thawing of permafrost. For the past decade, researchers have predicted that rapid Arctic warming would disrupt atmospheric circulation patterns, those that control the winter weather across the Northern Hemisphere. Another prediction being introduced suggests that the jet stream patterns developing now will occur more often, and they will move from west to east across North America more slowly than usual. The large jet streams seen today are hanging around much longer, are creating prolonged weather anomalies that lead to droughts, severe cold spells, one nor'easter storm after another, and even winter heat waves. A paper published in Nature Communications indicates that these linkages are no longer an hypothesis. In fact, there is a strong correlation between unusually warm Arctic temperatures and extreme winter weather in the eastern United States. Indeed, the monster nor'easters that have battered the northeast for an entire month are beyond extreme. You would have a difficult time convincing New Englanders that these storms are normal. Is it normal that residents of Cape Cod have been without power for an entire week? Is it normal that residents of Boston shore towns have seen their homes wrecked twice by record high tides and massive waves? Is it normal for the residents in the interior communities to get two feet or more of snow all at once? The streak being witnessed today across North America has become a new normal. What we see now are storms that are uglier and which stay around longer, much to our dismay. There can be no doubt that things are changing quickly here on Earth. But what about the sun? Long ago, people would worship the sun as a deity. After all, it provided the essentials to sustain life on this planet. But then came science and industrialization, which pushed the sun's importance to the wayside as people generally forgot about the sun and its importance to our survival. Even so, the importance of the sun's energy to our existence has not diminished. In fact, the life of the sun is quite complex. 
which has some experts expressing concern for our future in some rather dramatic ways. It's commonly accepted by scientists who spend their time observing the sun that the number of dark blemishes on its surface tend to appear and diminish any predictable 11-year cycle. When sunspots began to vanish, then it would be expected that the sun was entering into a so-called grand solar minimum cycle, which coincided with a type of mini ice age that had harsh winters and the infamous year without a summer. This period of time became known as the Maunder Minimum, so named after astronomer Edward Maunder, who studied the solar cycle. The controversy that still exists at this particular time is one that argues whether the strange behavior of the sun is contributing to extreme temperature fluctuations on Earth, and whether industrialization is also playing a role in the effects of climate change. According to NASA, the sun is entering into a period of few or no sunspots, but does this actually explain the brutal winter episodes that have occurred in the northern hemisphere in recent weeks? Some experts are predicting that we are entering into another grand minimum cycle, which is very similar to the Maunder minimum, which would mean a period of brutal winter weather and much cooler summers. Now, for those who live south of the Mason-Dixon line, cooler summers sounds rather refreshing. But in reality, nature would be playing a cruel joke on humanity. Such an event, if it were to occur, would have a profound effect on the global economy in the manner of rising energy use and the likelihood of crop failure. In a time of abundance, a drastic change to the world's harvest would come as a shock and would broaden the scope of economic instability. There are many unknowns when discussing solar science, as there is still so much to learn about how the sun behaves and the role it plays in controlling the Earth's climate. On Earth, there is an upheaval happening below the surface as volcanoes spew their fury, causing distress and misery for people caught in the crosshairs. On Ambi Island in Vanuatu, the Lambenben volcano, regarded as one of the most dangerous in the world, blasted ash and smoke across the island on March 21st. People returning to their farms and villages found them devastated. Buildings and trees collapsed under the weight of the ashfall. Water supplies were contaminated, and food gardens were smothered. The island has been placed on high alert for fear of further eruptions. Meanwhile, a massive crack formed in Kenya's Great Rift Valley on March 19th. The crack is believed to be caused by the movement of the faults. It is 50 feet deep and 65 feet in width. This is a reminder that the African continent is shifting and will likely split into two land masses. The rift is occurring as the Nubian tectonic plate moves away from the Somalian plate, and the latter will eventually pull the Horn of Africa away from the rest of the continent. It's the second time in five years that a crack has opened up at that location in the Rift Valley. 
As stewards of the earth, it is our responsibility to care for the planet and all life that dwells therein. But when humanity falters in their responsibilities, fails to live up to their commitments, and chooses to live in sanctimonious ways, then the earth becomes restless and responds to our neglect in adverse ways. During the Middle Ages, a series of earth-shattering volcanic eruptions in Iceland caused its people, who were known to worship pagan gods, to turn to Christianity. So why would volcanic activity turn people towards a transcendent god? The answer lies in a prominent medieval poem known as the Voluspa, which predicted that a fiery eruption would eventually lead to the downfall of the pagan gods. Indeed, there is hidden within the collection of Icelandic poems an apocalyptic message that describes how an eruption and meteorological events would mark the end of the pagan gods and the beginning of Christianity for Icelanders. According to historians, in the spring of the year 939 AD, or about 100 years after the Vikings and the Celts had settled in Iceland, a colossal event took place that unleashed 4.8 cubic miles of gushing lava onto Iceland. The event lasted until the autumn of the following year. Historical analysis of events at that time matches medieval chronicles from Ireland, Germany, and Italy, which noted that haze had spread across Europe in the year 939, the same year in which the horrific eruption took place in Iceland. Tree ring data also reveals that in the year 940, the Northern Hemisphere had one of its coldest summers in the previous 1500 years or what is commonly referred to as a year without a summer. The cold shift is consistent with the release of vast amounts of volcanic sulfur into the atmosphere, which coincides with the temperature changes which occurred in the year 940, where temperatures were nearly 4 degrees lower in much of the northern hemisphere. The result of these atmospheric changes were severe winters, drought-ridden summers, the invasion of locusts, and the death of livestock. As uncanny as the events of the 10th century were in the Northern Hemisphere, they sound strikingly familiar to the events we see unfolding in the 21st century. In the year 1000 AD, a mere 60 years after the colossal Elja eruption, the people of Iceland converted to Christianity, and the Voluspa prediction may have played a major role in their conversion. Part of the poem explains how the sun starts to turn black, land sinks into the sea, the stars scatter from the sky, and the flame flies high against the heaven. Although the Elja eruption occurred some two decades prior to the writing of the Voluspa apocalyptic poem, Icelanders who had experienced the ferocious spectacle most likely looked back on the event and wrote this poem with the purpose of stimulating Christian doctrine in the latter half of the 10th century, which finally led to the conversion of Icelanders. Ironically, the predictions of the Voluspa in the year it was written would be fulfilled at nearly four decades later. It is in essence a narration of the creation and destruction of the world according to Norse philosophy, which makes this a remarkable story about the power of persuasion when nature's fury has dominion over the people. As we look to the sky, there are many spectacles that transcends our understanding of the universe all around us. If we look up, it will be seen. If we fail to do so, the opportunity will pass us by. An unprecedented phenomenon took place over Kelowna, Canada on March 19th, which amazed sky watchers and photographers alike. 
What they saw was a sunset that caused the horizon to be split in half. It occurred as the sun sank behind the distant terrain. Local meteorologists attempted to explain the phenomena as a terrain feature, which was blocking part of the sun's rays. But what would be so big that it could hide half of the sun? There is so much that we do not know or understand about the universe and all of its creations. But if we keep looking to the sky, all that is unknown will soon be revealed as we come to understand the true meaning of our existence. Thank you.